Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to replace the engine coolant on this 2023 Toyota Sienna. While um, I guess it's physically possible to crawl under there and, uh, you know, do this job without lifting the vehicle up, potentially, I am going to lift it up just to make things easier and uh, easier to show you what I'm doing. So here is the one lift point. So anywhere along this pinch weld, you can lift it up and then make sure you use a jack stand. Don't only you rely on a jack to keep you safe because those things can sometimes fall out or collapse. And, and then in the rear, we have the same setup. So that's where you're gonna lift it up by. You should replace the engine coolant at the first 100,000 miles and then every 50,000 miles thereafter. Make sure to do this job with a cold engine, otherwise you might get burnt by a hot steam escaping from the cooling system once you open it. I'm going to remove this whole front engine cover. You don't have to take the whole thing off, you could undo some of it and reach inside there, but. I'm gonna take the whole thing off just so you can see uh, what's inside. It'll be easier to show you all the details. I'll start by removing these uh, front wheel opening extensions. There are four screws holding each one of them on. There are 10 millimeter heads. And then do the same with the one on the other side. Now we have these uh, three 10 millimeter head bolts. couple of clips and then uh, eight screws around the front the coolant Drain plug is located right here uh, on the left side of the radiator. Install a piece of a uh, 5 16 of an inch or 8 millimeter inside diameter hose on the drain plug. And then uh, place a suitable drain container underneath the vehicle. I use a drain pan like this and uh, check for the links below the video for all the tools and supplies that you may need to do this job. Now you can open the drain plug. Don't pull it out completely, just open it enough for the coolant to start draining. Now you can open the radiator cap and uh, wait for all the coolant to drain out of the system. Once the coolant flow slows down to a drip, uh, you can close the drain plug and uh, disconnect the hose. Now we can reinstall this uh, splash shield or lower engine cover, insert it under the bumper and then uh, you can start by installing the two clips to hold it in place and afterwards you can do all the bolts and the screws. Make sure that uh, all these front portions are inserted inside the bumper and not sticking out. Now you can uh, reinstall these three bolts. And uh, tighten them to 66 inch pounds. Get the eight screws in from the front and uh, there's no torque spec on them from the manufacturer but they go into plastic grommets so just don't over tighten them don't be beating on them with an impact gun or something just uh, snug them up by hand and lastly install these uh, wheel wheel opening extension covers uh, one on each side with four screws and tie the nose by hand as well. Now we can fill the engine up. It helps to have a, a filling kit adapter like this. 
you can check the links below the video for where to find it now uh, slowly fill the system with uh, genuine toyota premix super long life coolant the one i have is mixed uh, 55 45 because uh, it's a canadian mix um, other places have it 50 50 it doesn't matter either is fine and it's important to fill the system slowly that will help you uh, prevent uh, forming any airlocks so just take your time and uh, fill it with a slow trickle you don't want to dump a bunch of coolant in there and uh, trap air inside so keep filling until uh, it's full and you see some uh, coolant in the bottom of the funnel that's just standing there okay now that we have some coolant in the funnel squeeze the upper and lower radiator hoses by hand and uh, just get as much air out as you can so the lower hose is right here give them a few squeezes the upper ones right here now we can uh, open the reserve tank and uh, transfer the funnel over there and let's fill this guy up a bit the low level line is right at the bottom and then the full line is right here so we're gonna fill it up until the full mark now we can uh, take the funnel out and uh, close the cap here and take our adapter cap off and put the radiator cap back on Okay, now we're going to bleed the cooling system. So I'll briefly describe what we're going to do and then I'll show you. We're going to put it into a maintenance mode to let the engine run all the time. And then we're going to rev it up. You're supposed to rev it up to 1500 RPM for 15 seconds or more. Because these don't have a tachometer, you know, unless you have a scan tool, uh, you can't really tell what RPM it's at. But uh, just give it some gas and rev it up for 15 seconds. And then after that, we're going to uh rev it up to 2500 rpm for 10 seconds and then let it idle for 10 seconds and we're going to repeat this three times so rev it up for 10 let it idle for 10 and then we're going to wait uh, for the coolant to circulate for several minutes after that and we're going to confirm that the thermostat's open we're going to squeeze the radiator hose by hand and feel for vibrations of the coolant running through honestly that can be kind of hard to feel so what i usually check for is that we have hot air blowing out of the vents inside when it's set on hot with the engine at idle if it's idling and it's blowing hot air without you having to rev it up that pretty much tells you that the system's bled out so let's get to it let's put the engine in maintenance mode so uh, turn the ignition on uh, without pressing the brake pedal press gas twice shift it to neutral press gas twice again shift it back to park press gas twice again so now it's in maintenance mode and we can start it up and that's gonna make the uh, engine run all the time okay so now let's uh, rev it up you can't see the tack but if you just give it full throttle it's gonna uh, limit the rpm it's not gonna over rev so let it run for uh, 10 seconds like this okay and now let it idle for 10 seconds and we're gonna repeat this process uh, three times In the meanwhile, you can put the heater on full blast and uh, you know, you can put it on a, a face mode so that you can feel the temperature of the heater of the hot air blowing out. So as I mentioned earlier, after you let it idle for a while, after we do this process three times, 
you'll be able to tell if the coolant uh, system is bled from air when it's blowing hot air at idle consistently. Okay, so now we've let it um, rev up three times for 10 seconds at a time. And now we're gonna let the uh, engine coolant circulate for several minutes. And while the engine is idling, keep an eye on the coolant temperature gauge. Uh, make sure it doesn't overheat in case there's a big airlock, but these things bleed pretty easily. And if after running for a while, you're not still getting very hot air, uh, you may wanna repeat the procedure again uh, when you give it gas after it's been running for a while, it's not going to rev the engine up. So you can shut it off and then uh, you can repeat the whole process of putting it into maintenance mode again. And then, uh, you know, give it some gas, let it rev it up. And that's going to help circulate the coolant better. So now we got it back in maintenance mode again. And then just uh, give it some revs. Let it rev up for a little bit, then idle down, rev up, idle down. So do that for a bit until you're getting nice hot air blowing out of the vents. And that's going to tell you that you're done. Okay, so I've had it running for about 20 minutes. I've uh, done the bleeding procedure three times with uh, shutting it off, putting it back in maintenance mode and uh, revving it up and down. And now it's blowing nice hot air, so we're gonna shut the engine off. Okay, now you can uh, check for any leaks under the vehicle. There shouldn't be any. I mean, we didn't open a whole lot of things, but uh, just double check, nothing's leaking. And the last thing you wanna do is set the coolant level. So to set it properly, you need to wait for the engine to cool off, which is gonna take a few hours. And then once it cools off, uh, top up the coolant right to the full mark right here and then you're good to go and you're done coolant replacement is completed Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more Toyota Sienna maintenance and repair videos. See you next time. Cheers